I wish I knew. Welcome back to My Husband is My Best Friend. Carlissa describes her relationship with Sterling before their marriage. You should have told me on, on Patreon. You can't tell me on here. You see, it's two million people on here. You should have told me on Patreon, girl. I'm working on getting the cameras in the jail um, for the youth to have a conversation with my son. But this week we will be um, we will be having the cameras uh, up there with Callie before and after reunion. So if y'all want to get firsthand before and after the reunion, you don't want to miss. The camera's already pulled up. 169 is a good wait for you. Okay, we're gonna see about that. I'm gonna go for this 20. I'm gonna go for it. Cause y'all seen that when we y'all seen on the auntie's podcast, I was the only one there sitting looking like a big Be sure bee. to like, share, and Shit, subscribe. If I lose too much though, Tokyo might try to handle me. <laughs> I gotta keep some of this on me. <laughs> That's the only thing that was keeping her at bay. <laughs> I stood up like a big mama. <laughs> We've been posting episodes every week on time, every week, every Sunday for over a year now. So if y'all want to go watch the beginning to the end of all the madness, all the hell, it's taking a turn right now. We finna see what's happened. It's taking a turn right now. I got the grandkids back. It's taking a turn right now. So if y'all want to go see how, how, how good and how bad and all the juice and all the tea all the episodes is still up matter of fact i'm finna put season one on my youtube and probably season two on tubi because you know tubi paying a dollar for each view so if i get a dollar for each view on tubi and i get six million views you know what i'm saying i got a little plan i got a little master plan that's why i'm just racking up all the episodes all the episodes are good quality episodes it's almost twenty thousand happy subscribers she said she left because I didn't unblock her and she should have told me that on the Patreon. I talk to everybody on the Patreon every day. Well, not every day, but almost every day. We, we talk private talk in there. They give me advice. They tell me what they want, what they want to see, and we make it happen. Me and Mrs. Sappho about to start cooking on there for y'all. Some healthy meals, some dirty meals. You know how we gonna do it. Some holiday meals. That's a lot finna be going on on Six Eye. We getting ready to have Halloween and Thanksgiving. And we gonna show y'all how um, a couple of nigglets from Ohio gets down. Because we get down. Me and Mrs. Saffold, honey, we gets down. Okay? We get all the poultry in there, honey. We get them neck bones going. Them hog mogs, honey. <laughs> shit. That pig feet. Couple shitlings. We gets down for the holiday, okay? We gonna see how many of the kids pull up. You know, his kids ain't speaking to us. My kids ain't speaking to us. They all got a hair up their ass, but that's okay because me and Mr. Sappho waking up every day on the lake like God promised us, okay? Because he took care of his kids <laughs> with his last dime. When I met Mr. Sappho, y'all, we should probably tell this story on our little husband, po husband and wife podcast. But when I met my husband... He didn't have matching socks. <laughs> My baby had holes in his socks. <laughs> Babe, just tell the truth. Don't be ashamed of where we came from. You can't be ashamed because you have to you have to encourage people. We gonna go we gonna show y'all this house when we got married that we lived in. It was a it was a townhouse. <laughs> It was a t and it had no roaches or nothing. Might have had a rat here or there. <laughs> it was a townhouse in Ohio. When we got married, we made like what, fifteen dollars an hour each. Well, I made like twenty-two. You had two jobs, so you was really doing like thirty. Then you had the military, so you was you was pulling in some good ends. But anyway, we saved up, and we got a, we got our first house in Grove City. All our friends came over. You know how they do your friends when you move up next to the white people. They is a little jealous and shit. You know what I'm saying? We was the first niggas off the block. They don't call us now, girl, because we on the lake now. They don't call us at all. <laughs> we just be sending them pictures from the lake like, 
going for a walk today. <laughs> but anyway, we lived in a townhouse and our rent was what, babe? $750? My husband lived in that apartment for 20 years. <laughs> he had three child support bills. He did the best he could do, honey. Um, and I came along. So don't be shy to get you no man that's, you know, military, you know, that ain't rich. Because when, when a man get a good wife, he going to be rich. That's what the Bible tell you. If he already rich, that's going to be his shit. And you're going to have to be arguing or fighting all these bitches for it. But if y'all earn that shit together, it got a deeper meaning to it. Me and Mr. Sappho do not look at our bank account other than to see, like, budget here, budget there. We don't. I don't know what he spend. I don't know what I spend. He don't ask me. I don't ask him. The Lord just keep it filling up every year, every month, every day. We ain't never in our life had an argument over money. Lord, please keep it that way. Because I know sometimes when you tell the devil, he'd be like, okay, I see how to come get that bitch. <laughs> you ain't going to come get us by no money because we lived in a $750 townhouse and we was happy. Wasn't we happy, babe? We was having more in that townhouse than we have now. With that um, plastic on the mattress. <laughs> Man, you have plastic on the mattress. I said, uh-uh, baby, we're going to take this this plastic off this mattress. We're going to start there. Girl, when you meet a man, if he got plastic on the mattress, just take it off. He had a two-bedroom townhouse. He had both his kids living with him and was still paying child support. I'm like, no, <laughs> we got to turn one of these off if they're going to be here. She needed to be giving us that money. You see what I'm saying? Because when you get a wife, then you kind of figure out like, oh, I ain't supposed to be paying her while they over here. No, <laughs> that's my money. <laughs> you got to go down there and, and adjust some shit. They're going to be a little mad at first, but you know, then everything works out. You know, then we can spend more money on the kids. Because, you know, we had three kids graduate high school. We had Ladrin, Jerik, and Blueface graduate high school all at the same damn time. Now, our little broke ass, you know, was trying to get prom clothes. Thank God it was just one girl because her dress was like $750. I'm like, girl, I could have got that shit downtown L.A. for $100. But, you know, we in Ohio, so we got to respect the budget. So, yeah. So, don't be ashamed to get you a regular hardworking husband. And once y'all bond and y'all connect and y'all don't fight over money and y'all don't let the kids. Like, I, when I went into this marriage, I said, nah, uh because y'all ain't running this husband off. I made sure he was big enough to handle Blue and Dre and Callie. Okay, because Callie up my last husband. Blue ran up the stairs and hid. He said he didn't want no parts of that shit. We've been toxic for a long time, but we getting better. Every day we getting better. But ass ain't nothing for this family. You know what I mean? It just, Mr. Sappho put him down. He said, uh-uh, I got military. I know some moves. I said, get them back. You know, because my sons be thinking, was thinking growing up, they was thinking this, this our shit, this, this schoolyard, <laughs> this Harlem, this, this something. This ain't that, this Carlista. They ain't paying none of our bills, okay? I don't know where I'm going with this, but I know it's some mothers on here that's, that's understanding what I'm talking about. When you got them big ass sons, six foot four, six foot two, and your husband only five, five. What the f was I thinking? I said, oh no, the next one going to be bigger than both of y'all put together. Shit, I went down there. I got on that Facebook. I said, I just typed it in, six, two, big. <laughs> I'm lying, y'all. Y'all know I'm a comedian. <laughs> I'm really practicing on y'all. I'm practicing my comedy right now. But that's true. I did. I put in. I just started scrolling through Facebook. And, you know, I like them a little light. You know, that first one, that first dark one burnt my heart. So I said, that I never, ever, ever let a chocolate do me dirty. You know what I'm saying? I'm too, I'm too fine for that. <laughs> so I did. I, I started with that vanilla and I, I, I ended there. You know what I'm saying? And um, <laughs> I done got all off subject <laughs> thinking about that. 
But girl, yeah, he shit. I said, you know, I went and we talked about it. We pillow talked about it. We, I was like, you know, because I got a, a son in jail. You know, he a little rough around the edges and shit. You know, and I got blue. He, you know, he think he could beat up everybody. He only weigh 125 pounds. I think you could take him. But, you know, he, him and Callie, they be boxing every, every day and shit. Thinking they hardcore, you know, at the L.A. Fitness bench pressing 300 fucking pounds. Eating up all my husbands and shit. You know, Callie just got a hair up her one day. The man was yelling at me in my face. I'm sorry if you on here. He was yelling at me in my face. You know, Blue was like, what, babe? Like, maybe 12, 11 or 12. He was too young. He wasn't really active yet. He was kind of nerdy and in the sport still. So he wasn't like, you know, Dre and Callie. Dre and Callie was like L.A. <laughs> to the core. You know, he Dre, Blue just kind of had it on the surface. You know what I'm saying? He didn't really have to do too much because Dre going to pull up. Callie going to pull up with him. They friends. And it ain't going to be that much to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to pull up. We going to pull up. We going to just pack the car out and pull up. Maine was with us. You know, once Maine got with us it was shit we was our own gang it was me dre Maine, cali blue shit we was the <laughs> we was the section eight mafia what you talking about <laughs> who bother who who Ch cali come running in there talking about somebody chasing her home i said i know they ain't chasing you home who chasing you home girl we would get in that car lock up that store girl because at the time i had a store so everybody knew us everybody knew the whole family had you know what i'm saying was a, a a quarter short of 50 cent you know what i'm saying we didn't they knew we already didn't have them all they knew their mama didn't have them all i don't know why these folks was trying my kids so anyway he got a hair up his one day and he started loud talking me in my face on me and callie laying on my lap we just laying there we just came back from visiting dre so we kind of sad our heart is kind of broken this is a real live story we like can't believe we had to leave this got that jail and we just sitting there moping around. You know, he want to do the funky Watusi. Excuse me, babe. He want to do something. He want to get active. And I'm like, that's weird. My kids are here. Like, no. <laughs> and anyways, he started talking loud. And Callie stood up and was like, back up. You spitting on me. And then the next thing you know, he got in her face and was like, stay in child's place. <laughs> she was like, this my mama. Ain't no such thing as a child. She started doing her neck like Dre. Then she pulled up her shorts like, what up, cuh? And I said, Callie, no, what are you doing? She was like, he's spitting on me. He talking all, he's talking like, you know, because Dre in jail. So he really thinking like, you know, he could, he could do what he want to do now because Dre out the way, you know, because Dre already had him in the corner sitting in the corner somewhere so you know Callie gonna pull up like she Dre now she like what up so next thing you know he pushed her like to sit down and I before I could even like react like hold on Callie this still a nigga. like we can't you know what I'm saying we gotta plan this shit out we can't just be she just backed and was like boom I said oh shit we in this nothing I could do that's my daughter like he hit her back boom bust her shit like Bust her lip. I said, oh, no. I, I sat my shit down. We just, burr, burr. we see John run upstairs. John run upstairs and get the, um, the fake BB. Me and Callie in this shit like, what the f is you going to do with that BB? He like, I was going to BB him. I don't know. I'm like, anyway. So he like flips me. I had to grab a candle holder. Like, I nah, just doing, we doing too much now. He about to, I get the candle holder. I'm boom, knock that down. He ran out the front door. Callie locked the door. We called 911 and that was the end of the marriage. So that's how I lost my second husband. <laughs> he said, them kids. You feel me? That's just what he said. He went to jail for like six months. I ain't going to tell his business. But you ain't supposed to, like, hit no kids in their mouth. So, Callie's lip was leaking. His head was leaking. So, you know how Popo do when you a woman. Like, <laughs> it is what it is. You should have kept your hands to yourself. And when she says, stop spitting on her, stop spitting on her mama, you should have just tucked your tail and went on upstairs. You know, because Drayden already got Callie, like, street. Like, she, like, valley girl, street girl. You, you see how she's so torn in the middle. But Dre is in there somewhere. You're going to see it when she, like... You know, she do that little face. It's like, oh my God. Like he, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. 
So anyway, I tried to sneak around with him for a little bit after he got out of jail because he now he's scared of my kids, you know, blue getting taller and bigger than him. So now it's like for real three against one. But girl, we looking at blue like you went and got the BB. Thank God we didn't have no real because woo. But I guess he was going to BB him, child. I don't know what the, but he came downstairs with that BB, clicked it back. And I was like, you trying to make him think it's real? I'm, I'm lost here. Me and Callie putting in work. You better get over here. You <laughs> grab a leg and peach this. I don't know. But anyway, I learned how to be a wife after that. And I learned that you cannot have um, teenagers and a husband. You got to wait. So I, me and Mr. Sappho started dating, like, what was they like? Juniors in high school. And we just dated for like a year and a half or so, sneaking back and forth, you know. <clears throat> Not too much in front of our kids, right, babe? <laughs> I'm telling this story. <laughs> I'm telling our life story. They want to know what happened. You know, I wasn't gonna let them. I wasn't gonna let him be my kids or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm -mm, I gotta keep this one. Shit, he got dental. He got medical. Y'all is not gonna f this up for us, okay? <laughs> girl i said mm -mm. so we snuck back and forth for like a year year and a half and then he got he started visiting with me visiting andre with me at the jail i was like oh this a good dude this a real good dude right here so anyway y'all gonna see on this next episode i'm gonna cuss his ass out because for some reason i ain't got my my shit i ain't got my shit but i ain't gonna say what yet um but yeah, that's how that played out. So um, we had a wedding. We had a very beautiful wedding. So God came through for me later on the back end. You know what I'm saying? Them fake ass, that bullshit I had before. I don't know what that was. It was practice. Them was practice marriages. It was practice. So you might have to go through some practice. Hopefully not, but you might have to go through some practice. And so Blue gave me away. Dre was supposed to give me away. <clears throat> you know my daddy wasn't giving away shit. <laughs> he like, bitch, I done already gave you away three times. I'm not doing this again. My daddy will refuse. So, meanwhile, long story short, he should have. Because what are we, 10 years in now? And so, Blue walked me down the aisle and gave me away to Mr. Sappho. Like, here, take her. Because I'm about to go get rich and she ain't getting none of my shit. <laughs> So yes, it was like the little fairy tale story. You know, he had that that VA shit. So you know, we got a house right after we got married, four bedroom house on an acre in Ohio. You know, three hundred and some thousand. So we we was doing a little something. You know what I'm saying? We've been doing a little something. Like Blue told you, my mama didn't need help. She already had money before I got famous. You know what I'm saying? So I was already kind of working my way up the ladder. Restaurant. Restaurant. And we had a restaurant called Buckeye Cheddar and Chili. So we was already on the map. Um, they just kind of following in my footprints. But that's okay. I, I'm so grateful to see, you know, them trying to do the impossible right now, <clears throat> no matter what. And that's okay. Dre, Dre, once he calms down with his PTSD, he'll get it together. And then my husband's, um, both his daughters is um, college graduates and his son is a manager at his company. He, he's a homeowner with a new baby. So everybody is, everybody, we enjoying the fruits of our labor. We really are. I know it looks up sometimes. It looks a hot mess, but just bear with us, y'all. We rounding off. What is, what the kids kind of simmer down around 30, 34-ish. How old was you, babe? 35-ish? before you start stop acting like a goddamn fool yeah i was probably about 40. they might be late like me thanks for tuning in to my husband is my best friend